over a period of time I've compiled some information on three, actually four, of our 30 caliber Magnum cartridges. A 300 Winchester, a 300 PRC, a 300 Weatherby, and a 300 Remington Ultramag. Now, early on I stated when the PRC came out that there really was really no advantage and I focused on the velocity aspect of this cartridge. Well, the fact of the matter is there's only a grain plus difference in favor of the PRC over a 300 Winchester Magnum. So it should be very obvious to anybody that has any understanding here at all to do with case capacities and so forth that there is very little difference considering the same barrel manufacturers, the same, same length barrels and so forth and so over time and as, as of lately I began to com compile some of these things together to be able to bring more to light the real truth here on this situation. Now I stated early on that the 300 Weatherby had the edge. The 300 Weatherby has been a cartridge that's been clear around the world many times over and has done everything almost imaginable and the way of taking game in all parts of the world. And I've stated this in the past, and I'm going to detail some things here. I've chambered rifles over time in 300 Winchester, 300 PRC, 300 Weatherby. I'm going to talk about those first, and then I'm going to talk about the 300 Ultramag. Now, every chamber that I have chambered for these for these cartridges has had the same length throat, the same diameter throat, one caliber. Now what do you suppose one caliber means? 308 we're talking about a 308 diameter bullet that's one caliber. So from the case mouth to the 300 diameter on a bullet the distance is 308 thousandths. That's one caliber of distance. That's the length of the throat. So every every one of these chamberings, 300 Winchester, 300 PRC, and 300 Weatherby are throated such. Now I have loaded ammunition with two different two different manufacturer and weights of bullets and recorded these velocities to compile this information that I'm you know offering out here to you. The 300 Winchester and the 300 PRC throated as I have just described a 308 length throat. In other words that throat with the taper runs out at bore diameter 308 thousandths ahead of the case mouth. That's pretty easy to understand. There's virtually no difference with the same twist barrel. I used 10 inch twist barrels in every instance for the bullet weights that I was shooting. 180 grain Nosler Acubons and 190 grain Nosler Long Range Acubons. Now, the 300 Winchester and the 300 PRC are pretty much neck and neck. You're going to have a difference between one barrel to the next barrel to the next barrel, but the barrels that I used at the time, different, of course different barrels, and compared different chamberings with loads loaded to the same pressure level, a maximum of one half, one, one half of a thousandth of case head expansion. My velocity averages were 3200 feet a second with the 180 grain Nosler Acubon hanging right at 3100 feet a second with the, two, with the 190 grain long range Acubon from Nosler. Now we'll step ahead just a little bit to the 300 Weatherby. 
out of 300 Weatherby, you know, is a, is a case that holds about eight grains more powder than the other two cartridges. It takes it takes more powder to get the same velocity as the other two cartridges. So the 300 Weatherby, it actually gives you just a little bit more velocity. And we're talking about, on an average, from what I have done in my testing, and I've, I've actually built literally hundreds of 300 Weatherby's and hundreds of 300 Winchester's, the velocities that I find are right there, and the rifle that I used at the time to check these things, I got 3,245 feet a second. That's about, on an average, 45 feet a second gain over the other two cartridges with the equal bullet weights. Anyway, the 3245 is the 180 grain weight, and we're reducing that, you know, about 120 feet a second with the 190. So, if we subtract that, we've got about 3,100, about 3,120, 3,125 3, feet per second with the 190 grain long range Acubon. Now, yes, I understand that people are using heavier bullet weights, but I've chosen these two bullets for a, for a very simple reason. They have proven to me over dozens of dozens, actually hundreds of rifle builds, that these two bullets are two of the most extremely accurate bullets. When I build a rifle, I don't test it with bullets that aren't proven to me to be extremely accurate. I try bullets and if they don't prove out to be extremely accurate, I don't use them. I've used these two bullets because they are very accurate bullets and I'm talking about the test that I made here groups anywhere from a quarter inch up to roughly a half inch with these rifles shooting these bullets. And same way with the with the 300 Weatherby, the accuracy is, is still there. We've got just a little, just a little bit more velocity and so forth. And this cartridge has been around. This is one of our very oldest, you know, 300 Magnums. One of the one of the first real advanced 300 Magnums to ever to ever hit the shooting world. You know, designed and developed by the late Roy Weatherby. Roy Weatherby saw a need and he went with it and he put high velocity on the map. Now, if we increase bullet weights, if we increase bullet weights, the only bullet that I consider to be the accuracy champ in heavier bullet weights, say, you know, something over 200, maybe 210, in, in the game type bullets is a 210 grain long range Acubon. That's a very, very accurate bullet, but the gain is not quite there because now you've you've actually dropped your velocity down somewhat. So we're still running, actually just about neck and neck, as far as what this cartridge does with that heavier bullet weight. And yes, I'm aware Hornady makes you know some heavyweight 30 caliber bullets. I don't consider them to be very good gain bullets, so I don't include these in my in my test and my rifle builds. I simply don't use them. Now I'm going to step forward a little bit. The 300 Remington Ultra Mag is capable of a bit more velocity than than the other three cartridges. And actually from a from a serious long range aspect, energy aspect a drop aspect and everything else, the 300 Ultra Mag loaded up to full potential in a good quality rifle that I build with good accurate heart, heart barrels is going to shoot just as well as these other two. Now I find that you know it's not it's not tough at all to get 30 in the 30 right at 3300 feet a second with 
180 grain bullets out of a 300 Ultramag. And somewhere in the 32, maybe a little bit plus, very little plus, but a little, well, the 190 grain bullet. Now, I might state that the 300 Ultramag doesn't have as long a throat, uh, not a full caliber throat, actually has a quarter inch length throat, which is 250 thousandths. So that's 58 thousand shorter length of throat from the case mouth to the 300 diameter where the throat runs out to bore diameter. Anyway, these are the situations here. This is the real honest situation comparing them, comparing things, the same bullet weights and so forth. And I've chose specific powders that are proven to me that, that work extremely well and probably the highest velocities that you're going to find in 300 Winchester, 300 PRC, 300 Weatherby are probably obtained with Reloader 22. Now this is a double base powder. It burns just a little bit hotter and one thing another. Anyway, you can get that kind of velocity out of, you know, probably out of H1000 and so forth. I mean, H1000, Hodgson's H1000 is an extreme version. Basically, it's more temperature stable, you see. So there's some advantage there. And I've used both the powders extensively and other powders over time, developing loads for many, many rifles. Now, when we move clear up to the, go clear up to the, 300 Ultra Mag. Now we need to go to a considerably slower burning powder, and I happen to have a reasonable supply of WC860, which is a pulled down military powder that I have had for quite a number of years, and also Hodgson's USA69, which is a very close duplicate to WC860. WC stands for Winchester Cartridge Company. And by the way, all those ball powders are made by Winchester, irregardless of whose name's on them. The 869 is, of course, you know, that's a Winchester, actually a Winchester made powder, made and dubbed by Hodgson's as US 869. Those are the powders to use that kind of velocity. I might mention that a 300 Ultramag requires a Winchester large rifle magnum primer as a rule to give you the type of performance because this is a high volume, this is 100 grains, 100, 102 grain area powder charges with various bullets weights that I'm talking about. So we have to have a primer. That primer was made for these big high capacity cases to burn the slower powder. And the other three cartridges are best run on Winchester large rifle primers, Federal 215, Federal 215 match, and CCI 250s. All four of those primers will do a very, very good job, and I might also add that the Remington 9.5 Magnum also does an extremely good job. It's just a matter of, if you have these primers, uh, trying these various primers in your loads to determine what really works in your rifle. And I'm going to add a few other things here. Hodgson's 4831 is an outstanding powder. It's an extreme version now. I use hundreds and hundreds of pounds of the early Hodgson's 4831. I, I still think it's one of the very best powders in a considerable number of our Magnum cartridges and you won't go wrong with Hodgson's 4831. Also Hodgson's H1000. Also this extreme variety. This is what, you know, this is how this powder is made in this day and age. That is maybe an advantage to you to have loads with the extreme version because it's more temperature stable. And this changes things somewhat. I have no, no data to offer you on the velocity differences according to temperature changes and one thing or another with the extreme variety, you know. So anyway, all loads 
that I load, I find my best accuracy with one half of a thousandth of case head expansion measured with a one inch tenth micrometer. This is where the accuracy falls in. This is where our standard deviations tighten up and it happens repeatedly when I'm sitting at the bench and loading and shooting and chronographing, working up loads for individual rifles in just literally dozens and dozens of calibers. I've got dies for several hundred different different cartridge combinations, which is, you know, which is a lot. And that's a lot to keep track of. It's a lot to store in in one's mind and one thing or another. And I write all these things down. I always sit there, you know, at the bench and I have my book and I always write everything down, record it, and so that I've got this information. I have basically a rough book and then a book whenever I work up loads for myself, I've got an individual book for myself that everything is detailed. But anyway, paying attention to all these various details and so forth is going to be an advantage to you. All four of those 30 caliber magnums are wonderful, wonderful rounds and in game fields anywhere that you want to hunt anywhere in the world with the proper bullet weights, with the proper bullet construction, the proper manufacturer's bullets made honestly for game with your with your ability with properly placed shots in the kill area you're going to bring home your game you know I'm going to touch on just for a moment the worst thing in the world is to use some of these very poorly constructed bullets that are not ma made or ever intended for for game but really actually are thin jacketed target bullets so there's what I've got to say and I'm going to continue these sorts of talks with other calibers I'm not just going to limit to the 30 calibers I'm going to talk about others and various cartridges in every caliber as I have time to do so.